Executive Director M. Dot. To do to there we go. I'm here. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? A little discombobulated <clears throat> this morning. Everything is a little running slow speed. It must be the the brain download. Well, you're not alone. I, I feel your pain this morning. <laughs> You know, being in politics is, is tougher now than I think it's ever been. Uh, maybe back to the founding fathers, uh, I could understand. I was reading this, and I don't think people understand this. On the average, there are, for every senator in Washington, D.C., for every senator, now you know this, there are an average of 74 lobbyists. 74 lobbyists for every senator in Washington, D.C., According to the Center for Responsive Politics, there were 12,051 registered lobbyists in Washington, uh, and they spent a total of $2.47 billion trying to get government officials to do their bidding, and this was 2012. That's a long time ago. It's yeah, probably that, double since that then. That number seems low to me. And yes, it is. That's not counting the people that come in from all the states. Uh, that's it. That is stuff. it. Well, um... Uh, so far, how has this resonated with the House and Senate as far as the governor's planned uh, highway pa package? Well, the good thing is all of our leaders have been in agreement for some time mm -hmm. now that it's wise to use uh, this one-time money, the taxpayer's money, on the core function of government that is our uh, transportation system. I think that's what the taxpayers expect. And so the good news is they're all in agreement is, is there a vehicle a making its it. way through? There is a vehicle open for them mm -hmm. to put language in that would do that. Uh, what the governor proposed is very aggressive, uh, $1.3 billion. Uh, what's good about it is it addresses MDOT's capacity program, which is our major uh, construction uh, projects around the state. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of set dormant for about 10 years. So uh, thanks to Senator Wicker, Federal Highway Administration received an extra billion dollars for Mississippi to be spent out over uh, the next five years. And that allowed us to restart the capacity program. The issue is, is most all of those projects in it are in the pre-construction phase. And so what the governor proposed and what the legislative leadership are discussing now is how they can best use this one-time money to move those projects that are most shovel ready out of the queue and start moving dirt on them as early yeah. as next year so that we can make this program start uh, rotating and functioning as it should. <clears throat> Brent, how long was this put together and who put this together because there seemed to be a lot of thought. What I, what I liked about it when I listened to the governor was that this was not a pie in the sky uh, here's what I want to do, and, and if you'll just let me do this. But then all of a sudden, when you start looking at shovel ready, it's going to be five years before you could even put a shovel into it. These were the ones that were most conducive of getting them done with the least amount of planning that had already been done. So yeah, he, I, I like he, I like what was put into that. He, he took all of these projects right out of MDOT's three-year plan, mm -hmm. right out of the capacity program. We started with those projects that we expect to have utilities uh, relocated and a, a certificate on the right of way this year. Uh, so, like for example, Highway 15 in Tippa County is one of the projects that would be the most uh, ready for construction as early as uh, hopefully spring of 24. Yeah. Uh, so he took them right out of our plan, starting with those that are most shovel ready, and he just moved down the list until he uh, had those projects that he thought were key uh, to moving forward. But they're all all projects that we're already investing and have been investing pre-construction mm -hmm. dollars into to bring them to the construction phase. And what this proposal will do is help uh, break loose that bottleneck and move some out of the queue and onto construction. And by doing that, it, it's kind of like a raising tide raises all ship. It moves everybody's project down the line. Just to give you an idea, in Tippa County, and, and I'm not going to read all of these, but this is in the uh, northern part of the state, northern uh, district, Tippa County, $150 million for a new alignment of Mississippi from Union County line to a mile north of Mississippi Ford Ripley. <coughs> then there's a $45 million for a new alignment of SR2 uh, bypass in Tippa County. Lafayette County, $150 million. Um, Mississippi 9 to 2.2 miles north of uh, SR6. DeSoto County got $125 million for widening I-55 from Church Road to uh, Mississippi 302. Total funding for that area is about four hundred and seventy million dollars. That's just in the northern part of the state, yeah, and that's before you get into Neshoba County has a highway right. nineteen four laning project that would be ready to be constructed should we have the money as early as next year. There's a another widening project and rehab project in Yazoo County, some others in the Delta. 
uh, Highway uh, 90 down in Jackson County, some Highway 49 in Harrison County. So there's projects all over the state. Well, I do like to see Yazoo County, LaFleur County, Madison County, Lauderdale County, Rankin County. In that area, Southern uh, Commission, you've got uh, Harrison County. You said, let's see, Harrison County, Covington County, Jackson, Lincoln, Walthall, Franklin, Forest, Forest, uh, in that area. And that's just the, that's in just the, that projects. So is there a deadline where this has to happen before we actually sign a die, or when's the deadline well, to I'm make sure this decision? If, if they do, like they did last year, there will be mm-hmm. a vehicle that will be kept alive until conference weekend, and that's when probably everything would be uh, hammered out and, and finalized into a plan. Uh, that's kind of my expectation. I guess there's other ways that that could be done, but if history repeats itself, this would be something that they'll keep a vehicle alive and there'll be... Mm-hmm. Uh, active discussions on how to best use the money where it can be most impactful for the taxpayers and makes the most sense for our program. And I would expect that to be finalized during conference weekend. Um, I'm curious about this one, Brad. Where's the pushback coming from? Uh, what's the negatives of this? Well, uh, I haven't really heard a lot of negative other than the fact that uh, some of the projects on this list, you know, that we could uh, receive the funds for the construction may have to sit in an account for a year or so before we're able to expend them for construction just due to where that project is and its its life. We have probably out of the 19 that he mentioned, uh, about eight or nine of them that we expect to be able to let to contract in the year 2024. There's probably Mm -hmm. another seven of them that could go in 2025 and some beyond. So really the only discussion that I've heard that I really don't consider a pushback is uh, you know, what are the projects that we could really see dirt moving on as soon as possible, and what type of financial uh, investment would it take to move those out of the queue immediately? And that list may not encompass all the ones yeah. the governor mentioned. W- would this be a start immediately or wait till July when the new fiscal year starts? I would expect whatever funds that they give us we would receive in July, mm-hmm. and uh, we would begin programming them. And should the pre-construction phases stay on the course that they're on now, there would be a litany of projects that we could then uh, award a contract to build uh, in 2024. This would be, how many of these contracts you think would be cut at the same time? Because, I mean, you're, you're talking uh, about some would, new constru- they, a lot of construction going yeah, on. They would be fa- uh, phased out, I'm sure. It, it's, it's totally dependent upon how soon the utilities are removed. We have to have the utilities removed. I think it's two months before we're allowed uh, to begin construction and receive that certificate of right-of-way on that. Uh, like I said, I think the Tippa County project on Highway 15 is probably the, the closest to, to being ready, but Highway 19 in Neshoba County and the yeah. Highway 90 in Jackson County, there's others around the state that would fall in pretty close behind that. I just uh, Here's an interesting question. We never talk about this one a lot, but do we have the crews to do that? I mean, these are all that we're contracting out uh, in the private sector. D- are there enough crews to do this, or do we get them from out of state, or do we have a lot of people in Mississippi that can handle these jobs? I believe that the, this type of construction, there's a lot of hungry contractors out there that would do Ready it. Ready to go. I've huh? noticed, like yeah. with the Emergency Road and Bridge Program, uh, that the legislature has done since my time back at MDOT, we generally have multiple bids on those type of projects. So I would anticipate that this would be a, a something that the industry would soak up. I, I know you're getting a lot of calls and, and a lot of questions from some of the legislators who, who may not, like me, know a lot about highway construction, but what are some of the questions that they're asking you so they can make this decision. Well, you know, Zach Stewart, the old commissioner from the Northern District, told, yeah, told yeah. me about 25 years ago that all you had to do to be a good commissioner is know a little geography, that the <laughs> highest highway in the world yeah. goes through the Andes Mountains, the lowest highway in the world goes through Death Valley, the most important one goes in front of the house and who, to whoever you're talking to at the moment. And so most of the questions I get is, how does this impact our project in our county? Mm-hmm. And so the answer to that is, as we move these projects that are most shovel ready out of the queue, it elevates everybody else down the line. So this truly is something that regardless of where the money goes, if we spend it wisely, and if it goes truly to the projects that can be, a, a contract can be awarded on and the dirt can begin moving, then everybody behind that project moves closer to yeah. construction. Explain the money part of this again. You talked about one point something billion when we come back. How much of that is matching funds? How much of it can be released at one time, et cetera, et cetera? And all of that when we come back in a moment or two with Brad White from uh, MDOT. Talk to Professor Glenn Entizo, Department of History and Political Science at Mississippi College. The um, 
The head guy, Putin, did say earlier this morning he's pulling out of the START nuclear treaty uh, with the United States because of the, mostly because of uh, the verbiage that was going on in Ukraine for the president when he visited there, bringing another check to the Ukrainian people. So we'll see what happens with that. And we'll ask the good professor what his thoughts are and any updates. Back with more coming up next. It is a Tuesday, February 21st. Let's get back with Executive Director of uh, MDOT. It's uh, Brad White. And uh, Brad, we were talking about this a little earlier. We were talking about some of the projects and the highways. But there's also some money in here for the uh, for the uh, roads and bridges, too, is it not? Yeah, you're talking about the Emergency Road and Bridge yeah. Program. He proposed yeah. $100 million uh, for the program that's been in existence since 2018, that's primarily used on the municipalities and county bridges or roadways that uh, goes back to the bridge crisis we had back in 2017 and uh, helps the locals find a, a extra revenue source with yeah. which to address those. Are, are any of the projects, if somebody would ask, if any of the projects that we have planned now maybe it's supposed to start at any time, are these wrapped up in this package or are those... Uh, ancillary to this? No. Uh, what the governor did is he took our, as I said, the MDOT three-year plan, and he started mm -hmm. with a project, construction project, that uh, are scheduled to be ready to let to contract or begin construction in the year 2024, and then he just moved down that list until got uh, he yeah. got as far as he thought uh, was reasonable to go, and, and all of those came to about $1.3 billion. All right, explain the money a little bit. That $1.3 is from the federal dollars, or is that matching oh, that's, funds that's, with that, ours? That's not part of our uh, of MDOT's funding source. So as I understand it from the governor's office and some of the legislative leadership, the state has uh, some uh, expected reserves uh, that could be from the CapEx fund. Uh, I think mm -hmm. we're already over half a billion dollars over uh, the revenue estimate for this fiscal year. So it's expected that we would have one-time money that could be spent. And so that's what made this so logical, is rather than giving MDOT a portion of those funds to start new projects that would have to go through a six to eight year process of pre-construction uh, in hopes of moving it to construction, give us this one-time money and allow us to move those shovel-ready projects that are ready for construction yeah. out of the queue. And so this would be uh, one-time money that the state has uh, in the reserves that uh, everybody's clamoring for a piece of. This this could take how long if if uh, just uh, I'm just thinking about this. How long would it take if every one of these were okayed and and we finished them up? Would it be like a ten or fifteen year project, or how long? I mean, some of them it depends on how far down the list the legislature chose to go. Uh, mm -hmm. the, we just the commission just awarded a project on the coast on Highway 57 uh, that's expected to take five years to construct. Uh, we'll start, we would be able, if the funding was made available, to start a lot of these, like the Tippa County Project, mm. and Neshoba County Project, Jackson County Project, and hopefully in 2024. Uh, so we would begin construction then and wrap it up, hopefully within a, a few years, depending on the nature of each individual yeah. project. Yeah. Uh, so it just depends on where the projects are in the life of the project itself. The uh, the economic development on here is when you start looking at this, there's got to be a lot of people pleased with this because when you start going up and down the list of site development projects, it's very impressive. It's just about everybody it, it, gets something for the most part. It is. Now, I, I wasn't a part of that. That's out of our bailiwick. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I understand that it was a considerable amount of money or, or an announcement, rather, of how he was going to spend the money the legislature gave them, uh, foresight development, port development, and other things like that. I would imagine all three commissioners are happy with this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, uh, uh, any any projects that we're g given the construction dollars for that we can move out of our queue helps everybody. So it's one of those things that regardless of what region of the state you're in, yeah. we could uh, break yeah. loose that bottleneck and begin moving projects. It, it, it helps everybody. If you folks haven't seen this, I mean, it's on the it's on the website. I guess you do you have the map on your website at MDOT? Uh, yeah, we should. We do. Yeah, but I know the governor's promoting it as well. This was his proposal, so I, I, I know I've seen it on his social media and, and yeah. other things as early as this morning. Uh, I, and I'm not going to read all of these, but just uh, the, the Vicksburg River uh, mega site and port complex, uh, of about $5 million. Martintown North in Union County, Alcorn County has the Real Hub South, mega site at Chickasaw Trail Industrial Park in Marshall County, 
Oxford, Lafayette, Jackson County, Coldwater site, Madison County mega site, the Pearl River County Industrial Park, George County, Cleveland, Bolivar County Chamber of Commerce uh, on clearing, excavating, and, and uh, drainage improvements at the Charles W. Dean Industrial Park. But it goes on and on and on. Hines, Marion, uh, it's another full page here. Cleveland, Bolivar County, Port Bienville, uh, Port Aberdeen, and I'm not going to read the rest of them, but well thought out at the ones that are the most feasible and easy to do and and uh, we can get to the fastest. Anything else that you want to mention on this one, though? But it's, I'm just very thankful of the cooperative yeah. nature we're seeing. I mean, I think this is one of the first times you've had the Department of Transportation, the Governor, the House, and the Senate all working together for a mm -hmm. common uh, goal that is to uh, address the needs of our core function of government of transportation. So I, I, I think that's the best use of taxpayer money or on those core functions of government. So this is something that I'm very encouraged by. Well, this is a biggie. We, we uh, you know, we had some hints that something like this may be coming, and it's well due. We haven't had a, a major alignment like this since what back in the William De Winter days. Well, eighty-seven was the last. Eighty-seven. The eighty-seven four-lane program. Um, but again, as you mentioned, we need to. If 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 any of you folks are on the list and and you have a chance to call your state legislator, House or Senate, it would be a good idea just to say, look, you need to you need to get this bill done. Um. Any other bills that are going through that uh, you want to mention while we're here? No. Uh, as far as we're concerned, you know, I, I try to do no harm, and if the jury's going your way, I don't talk them out of it. So I try to stay hid until they need me. When 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 you have the seal, stop talking. That's basically it. <laughs> That's it's, right. it's, it's kind of like that. Right. Uh, how are the uh, visitor stations, the visitor sites coming along? They're, well, some uh, are in need of some fixing up. We're actually in the process of getting ready mm -hmm. to demolish two, one in Warren County, one in Jackson County, and rebuild those. Uh, I'm particularly excited about the one in Warren County because... Uh, I've seen the know, pictures our, on that our, one. It's uh, sharp, yeah. Our mutual friend, uh, the late Dick Hall of the legislature, is moving a bill through now to name that one after him. He was born in Vicksburg and, of course, represented that oh. area on the commission yeah. for 20 years. And so uh, that's rather special and will uh, be a very... A beautiful facility there on the riverbank, uh, but we're we're hopeful to move through those and start uh, rebuilding and remodeling uh, some of those around the state. I think the worst thing I heard on one of them, and this has been a while back, somebody says I've been disappointed in Mississippi or the uh, trip to the south on two things in the visitor station and and Elvis's house, and they both look like they were locked in 1885 or 1985 or something like that. <laughs> and I thought, some are, out, some are outdated, <laughs> but uh, hopefully we'll be able to little by little uh, uh, fix that problem as well. Brad, I thank you as always for coming through thank and you, uh, coming in, and if there's anything else we need, please let us know, sir. 